Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. This is the first video in a couple of videos that I'm going to be doing about what I would consider to be the most essential pedals that I would put on a pedal board. Today we're going to be looking at compression and dry pedals. The pedals that I've chosen for this particular video, one we're going to be using the Compressor Plus from Keeley. Next we're going to be using the Earthquaker Black Eye Boost. Now this boost pedal has a function that a lot of boost pedals don't have and I'll explain that in a minute. Next we're going to be using an overdrive pedal and today I've chosen the Vertex Steel String Clean Drive. This is a Steel String Singer Dumble style pedal but it's a fantastic sounding sort of light overdrive that you can push a little bit harder into the front of your amp to create some amazing tones. Lastly I'm going to be choosing the Boss Stroke JHS Angry Driver. This is a collaboration that Boss and JHS did where they put in one of my favourite overdrive pedals which is the Blues Driver made by Boss and the Angry Charlie made by JHS. Now this is a great sounding pedal but the reason I've chosen this is because I'm going to use the distortion side of this which is the Angry Charlie side but I will demonstrate the Blues Driver side just so you can hear the difference. With all the pedals off my amp sounds like this. I've explained this in other videos but I like to have my amps on the verge of breakup so what I mean by that is is that it's just on the verge between clean and drive and if I really dig in it sounds like this. Now the reason I do this, and I have explained this before, but I'll just go over it really quickly, is because I can control my dynamics. So the harder that I dig in, the more drive that I get, and the lighter that I play, the cleaner it is. So for instance, if I play really lightly. And then if I dig in, Now if I pick up a guitar, something like a Les Paul, that amp will be really driving. Let's start with the first pedal, which is a compressor. Now this is a Keeley Compressor Plus. I've used this in loads of different videos. Now the reason I love this compressor and a lot of the more modern compressors is because they have a blend control or a mix control. Now what that means is, is that you can dial in quite a lot of compression and then bring back the mix and have parallel compression. So you let some of the clean signal through as well. If I switch that in. The way that I use a compressor is just to take off the very sort of peak of a guitar note. Now with something like a Telecaster, because it's quite a bright sounding instrument, if I play something with the compressor off, you can hear that it can be quite sharp and piercing. If I bring it in, so it just takes those sharp peaks off. Now if you look at the way that I've got this set up, you've got this control here which is the sustain. Now that's basically the amount of compression and you've got this control here which is the blend control. The blend control is your mix control, that's how much compression you're allowing through. Now, the further back that I've got it, that's the compressor off, and the further forward that I've got that, the more compression it's in, so the less clean signal is coming through. Now, it's quite a subtle thing. But you can hear it's a lot more transparent once we've got the mix back. Now also you'll see that I've got the sustain, which is basically the amount of compression dialed right back as well. The reason why I do this is because I still want to retain all of my dynamics. So if I play something that's soft and loud, so you can hear that I've still got most of my dynamics. Now if I wind the compression all the way up, and let's wind the sustain up as well so we're getting full compression. So first of all soft. Now loud. So you'll hear from that that the majority of my dynamics have gone. So it doesn't matter how hard or light I play, the volume sort of remains at a constant level. 
So let's leave the compressor set up as I would normally have it, which is sort of just on. And now let's have a look at the boost pedal. So again, my guitar sounds like this with it off. And with it on. So when the boost pedal is set like this, there's no real difference. Now, the reason why I really like this particular boost pedal is because we can boost to go into the front of the amp or we can attenuate going into the front of the amp. So if I want to really drive the front of the amp, and off. And now if I want to attenuate what goes into the front of the amp so I can make the guitar even cleaner. The way that I've got this set up is that I can have a really clean sound. So say for instance, that I'm playing some sort of funk where everything's got to be crystal clean. And then I could take the pedal out and use it as my boost. Now, typically I'd have the boost pedal set up probably like that, just to drive into the front of the amp just a little bit more. Now you do get a completely different sound if you're driving the front of your amp than if you're using say like an overdrive or distortion pedal. So that's why a boost pedal is so good because you can still retain the character of your amp, but you're just pushing the amp a little bit further. Right, the next pedal is this Vertex Steel String Singer. These Vertex pedals are really, really good. If you're looking for sort of Dumble style pedals, they do make a few different styles of Dumble pedals and a few different overdrive and boost pedals, but the quality of their pedals is absolutely fantastic. So here's what the guitar sounds like. And if I bring it in. Now there's something that happens with this pedal. It just makes your guitar feel really reactive. Now this is a light gain overdrive. Even though this is a Dumble style pedal, I would still sort of call this a transparent overdrive. It's still retaining the character of the amp and the guitar, and it's just sort of enhancing it. Now this pedal can do so much more, but the way that I've got this set up at the moment is actually with the drive on full, and it's perfect for those sort of classic rock sort of things. Now, because I've got the boost before that, what I can do is to drive into the front of this to create even more gain. Which is great, and you always get that sort of light fuzz sort of tone out of it. Sounds fantastic with the boost pedal in front of it. So there's all my soft clipping stuff. Now, if I move over to the Boss JHS Angry Driver, now what I'm gonna be using on this is the Angry Charlie side of the pedal. Now that is a distortion pedal. It's sort of emulating a cranked Marshall JCM 800, and it sounds like this. So again, here's my clean tone. And there's my distorted tone. Let's use a Les Paul. Now this is a Les Paul with P90s. So it's got a bit more output than say the Telecaster, but it sounds great with distortion pedals. So with this pedal we're using hard clipping, so it's changing the sound of the amplifier because the amplifier even though it is important is less important when you're using something like this because most of the sound is actually coming from this pedal so for me personally that's what i would recommend 
as a starting point for pedal boards. Now, not everyone likes compressors, not everyone uses compressors. Some people feel that compressors completely change the way that the attack between the guitar and the amplifier occurs. But personally, I think if you use a compressor like that with the mix control, or get a compressor with a mix control, so you can dial that all the way back, so you just have a tiny bit of the compression just poking through, I think it really works. Then going into a boost pedal, then into a light drive, something like this uh, Vertex steel string, sounds great. And then going into a distortion pedal. Lastly, and I have demonstrated this before, the Angry Driver has actually got two pedals built in, as I said earlier. So we've got a Boss Blues Driver and the JHS Angry Charlie. If I dial this control back one, and as you can see, the LED has now turned to blue. That's now the Blues Driver. It sounds like this. Now that's why this pedal is so good because you've got those two sounds in it and you can actually blend these two together. But I have done a video on this before and if you want to see that, the whole review of the Angry Driver you can do and I'll leave a link up here somewhere. So there is what I would consider to be the starting block for compression and drive pedals. Now there are obviously other effects that you can use in your chain and I'll be covering them in other videos. So I really hope you guys got something out of this. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul and I'll see you next time. Cheers.